Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Uh, this is a statement from the Northern Dispatch where uh, Brandon Lee writes, um, Northern Dispatch condemns the strong in the strongest terms the attempt on the life of our Ifugao correspondent Brandon Lee. On August 6, at around 6 p.m., gunmen shot and seriously wounded him in front of their house in Ladaw. In 2010, Brandon, who is a U.S. citizen, opted to become a permanent resident of the Philippines and do volunteer paralegal work for the Ifugao Peasant Movement. It was also in this same period that he started to write for our paper. It was his human rights advocacy and profound commitment to serve the marginalized communities in the Cordillera that made him an effective reporter. His contributions reflected the kind of story that Nordis has expected has existed to publish and popularize the struggles of the common folk and the wonders of the countryside. This incident strikes the deepest concern that our outfit have long expressed that red tagging will eventually result to attacks against our correspondents and staff. For years, state agents and offices labeled Northern Dispatch of being a media outfit connected with the underground communist movement. Just a few weeks ago, during the regional workshop of the National Task Force to end local communist armed conflict in Baguio, the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency tagged Northern Dispatch as an official publication of the rebels. In recent years, the government's information office have, been, have even stopped sending us notices for regional peace and order council meetings as they claim that it was the order from above. It was only though through sheer assertion that we again received notification for, for coverage. Our staff and columnists across northern Luzon are under attack. Singled out by the state for their immersion and reportage of the people's fight against corporate greed, usury, and land grabbing, militarization and rights violations, corruption, and the other ills of society. They are branded as communist sympathizers and members for writing the truth and popularizing the strength of the poor and the marginalized. With the all-out vilification and violent attack against individuals and institutions critical to the Duterte administration, the attacks have in fact escalated from threats, arrests, and detention to shooting and killing. Two of our columnists, Sherwin De Vera, now our managing editor, and the late Randy Malayao were included in the list of individuals the Department of Justice accused of being members of the Communist Party of the Philippines and New People's Army. In its court's petition, filed in February 2018, to declare the two organizations as terrorists. In 2017, the police arrested and detained Sherwin, who is now the man for trumped up rebellion charges. Last January, we lost Randy to assassin's bullet. Bullets. As we all, as we all call for the immediate investigation and arrest of the perpetrators, Lordis also urges the media community to ensure the transparency and integrity of investigation to bring justice for Brandon, his clan, and community. We likewise call on our colleagues to work together and demand the government to stop its malicious and dangerous red tagging of media practitioners, outfits, and organizations. Let us be united not only on the fight for a free press, but for the right to life of each individual, united on the call to stop the attacks, stop the killings, End impunity <laughs> and no to tyranny. Look at that happen.